evening and welcome to For the Record. The Sai Prema Foundation is an NGO which operates to serve the poor and underprivileged in Fiji through various initiatives. Tonight we speak with the director of Sri Satya Sai Sanjeevni Medical Center and the medical coordinator of Sai Prema Foundation Fiji, Dr. Krupali Tapu. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for inviting me. So first of all, for someone who isn't aware, for someone who doesn't know, what is the Sai Prema Foundation of Fiji? Sure, so the Sai Prema Foundation Fiji is a non-government organization and a registered charitable trust founded to serve the underprivileged and needy people of Fiji through Medicare, social care and educare initiatives. Um, so basically we're a non-government government organization but we're trying to complement the government sort of serv services. Mm -hmm. um, our focus at the moment is um, largely on health care and on social care. Mm -hmm. um, and so at the moment we have quite a few different projects that are, are running um, uh, which fall under that umbrella. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in terms of the actual foundation, so it was formed in August 2016 um, by some like-minded individuals who wanted to do some good work for um, Fiji and for all Fijians. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a few of our trustees, we have trustees, we've got a, mem a small executive committee and some members of our foundation. Uh, so really all in all less than 20 actual foundation members, mm -hmm. but we do have um, volunteers and other people who are helping us in various different projects. When you say that you've got volunteers within your network, does that include other professionals that come in to help out with your outreach programs? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you've done quite a lot of work in the past few months and also over the past few years uh, with your uh, medical clinics and outreach programs. Given the fact that in Fiji a lot of people are sort of weary of going out to see other medical professionals mm -hmm. who are not part of the Ministry of Health, have you ever come across uh, obstacles in trying to raise awareness about the free medical clinics that you uh, conduct? So with the medical, um, so with our Health on Wheels um, outreach medical program to the rural villages of Fiji, um, Sai Prima Foundation actually collaborates with the Ministry of Health and Medical Services uh, and we take a fully equipped team of doctors, nurses, healthcare professionals, dentists, pharmacists and the whole team um, which goes out into the community um, and you know we do find that in a lot of these rural communities people are not going to um, go out and seek help mm. you know or medical care when they always need it mm. and so we find that by taking health out into their own communities you know we are giving them a great opportunity not just to fix uh, or identify a problem a specific problem on the day but to conduct more preventative sort of health care mm. um, in terms of uh, obstacles to be really honest I would say that um, we've not had any issues as such because we do collaborate with various other stakeholders and um, of course with the Ministry of Health as well mm -hmm. um, and wherever we've been we've had a very good response people um, really do appreciate the services you know we have some private uh, general practitioners who join us mm -hmm. we have medical professionals and specialists from the Ministry of Health and CWM Hospital um, we have some dentists who are part of the Fiji National University um, we have pharmacists who work in the private pharmacies we also have the women's wellness team which mm -hmm. is of course part of the Ministry of Health the eye team um, from the Pacific Eye Institute and CWM. We've also had um, the Diabetes Fiji join us at various different times, Cancer mm -hmm. Council for um, Cancer Awareness and Screening. Of course, we do um, um, blood pre NCD, non-communicable disease checkups, mm -hmm. you know, blood pressure, weight, high blood sugar levels. And really, in, in, in all the camps that we've conducted, um, we find that, you know, we find it really fruitful because there's always a lot Mm. of assistance that you can provide these um, communities mm. and it's free they don't have to pay anything mm. medications are free consultations are free and this sort of uh, comes under your your three-pronged mission that I was um, really interested to read about mm -hmm. so healthcare is one of those uh, yeah. uh, health uh, physical and mental well-being yes. the second one which is interesting is to raise uh, people's understanding of human values yeah. and the third of course is to promote love peace and unity yeah. so could you tell us about the other two um, of your mission? Sure. So with the, uh, with the second one, um, in terms of um, raising, you know, uh, the hum human values. Mm. So in our medical camps as well, we actually do conduct some human values education. We do have one of our foundation members who, um, you know, does little sessions and talks to people about you know, general sort of things that you think are important for any person to know about. Mm. Being kind, being compassionate, being good, 
I mean, those are all the values of the foundation and really um, Cyprema Foundation in terms of our core values, you know, the things that we follow, really love all, serve all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you love everyone and serve everyone, of course you're being a good person, you know, you're doing good not just for yourself but for others. Mm -hmm. um, the other principle we look at is help ever, hurt never. You know, if you, you are a good uh, person in society if you can do that. And also we believe that, you know, hands that help, um, they're better than lips that pray. You know, hel ha sorry, hands that help are holier than lips that pray. So mm -hmm. really, um, Human values, you know, love, peace, mm -hmm. all of these things are so important. Truth, righteousness, mm -hmm. uh, lots of things are happening around us in the world, you know, in this time. And I think the only way that we can achieve world peace is if we all learn to work together, mm -hmm. um, to live together. And Fiji, you know, we are a multicultural country. We have people of diverse different backgrounds, languages. Uh, but, you know, if we are all Fijians and if we all work together, mm -hmm. we can achieve a lot. For a small developing nation, I think we can achieve a lot if we mm -hmm. are united. And I guess at this point in time, uh, when we're discussing diversity, it is important to uh, point out a potential misconception that may be about the Sai mm -hmm. Prima Foundation because um, I understand that it is inspired by Sri Satya Sai Baba, mm -hmm. but it's not a religious organization per yes. se. Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, we are inspired by Sri Sati Sai Baba and, you know, um, these, all these values and all that, that I spoke about really are coming from the values and things that he find, found important. We are not a religious organization as such because if you look at all our activities, none of them are really religious based. Mm. Really, all these things that we look at, you know, and we'll talk about a lot of the other projects, you know, our blood drives, uh, heart surgeries, mm -hmm. you know, they're for all, um, they're really there for all Fijians. Mm -hmm. and. Um, there's no religious <laughs> propaganda as right. such. Mm -hmm. It's not for the Hindus or the Muslims or specifically the Christians. Mm -hmm. um, it's for all Fijians. And so uh, we'd probably like to be called, I understand that some people would think that we're really a specifically a faith-based organization, but I think that we really are a non-government organization mm -hmm. working for all Fijians. Thank you. We'll have more for you right after the break. Welcome back. Dr. Kripali, um, within the first year uh, when the uh, Sai Prima Foundation was established, there are a number of initiatives that were undertaken. So let's talk about some of those, uh, okay. starting with, uh, for example, the Gift of Life program, uh, which is providing free heart surgeries to uh, children of Fiji. Um, how many of these, um, how many of these uh, Gift of Life projects have you had? Uh, how many surgeries have been successfully completed? So the Gift of Life project is probably one of our biggest um, projects mm -hmm. as part of Thai Prima Foundation and um, it's a wonderful project because what it is all about is, you know, conducting free um, heart surgeries for children with congenital heart disease. Mm -hmm. um, and congenital heart disease is, you know, just for those who don't understand what it is, it's a defect that you're born with. You know, you've, you're a baby and you're born with either a hole in the heart or some sort of abnormality, whether it's structural or functional in the heart. And what we know is that, you know, um, most children with a critical lesion, if they're born with this, they will need surgery. Um, about half, at least half of those children will need surgery in the first year of life. Mm -hmm. um, now, what we have in Fiji at the moment are visiting teams that come in, like our team, um, uh, with our team. So we've had the Sanjeevni Hospital India. Um, we've collaborated with them because they actually have um, pediatric cardiac hospitals and they do... Uh, surgeries for congenital heart disease and all their treatment and everything is free. Mm. Um, so that gave us a big boost to sort of bring in a team and in 2016 we had the first team come in. Um, it was led by Dr. Ashish Katewa who's a pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon. Um, so we had uh, 23 successful surgeries done in that year um, with uh, you know Cyprima Foundation basically collaborating with the Ministry of Health and Medical Services um, you know, Cyprian Foundation looked after airfares and meals, and at that time, the Sanjeevni Hospital looked after consumables, and um, of course, we used the Ministry of Health's facilities, you know, the, mm. the theatres, and to be really honest, our new operating theatres are really fantastic and, mm. and world-class from what the surgeon even mentioned um, to us. So that was 2016. We had, um, you know, a good start. Um, then we had surgeries last August 2018. We actually had an international team come in this time around, um, we had 16 members and we had um, doctors and health professionals from India, from Australia, from the United States and from Muscat Oman. Mm -hmm. um, and we 
had 26 successful procedures done. We had a pediatric um, interventional cardiologist as well from Brisbane, Dr. Ben Anderson. And so during this trip, it was the first ever time that uh, cardiac catheterization procedures were done on children. Mm -hmm. So we have a cath lab at CWM. Um, they do some ca uh, interventional work in adults. Mm -hmm. But in the South Pacific, there's never been any procedures done on children. So mm -hmm. it was a monumental sort of time where the first time this was done. And so that was, that was usually successful. Um, also, we've had a few children who were quite complicated in terms of, um, you know, their lesions that they had that were really complicated and may not have been best to operate on them here in Fiji. Mm. They've also gone to our sister hospital in India, in Raipur, in, in Delhi, and had surgery done there, all free of cost. Mm. Um, so far, we've had 54 um, successful procedures done. Um, and if you look at the cost and the cost saving, you know, each surgery may cost about $100,000. Mm. So this is looking at over $5.4 million of saving to these families. And that's a huge help for someone who may not be from a privileged uh, background. Yes. Yes. So under the Gift of Life program, are there any future uh, visits that we can expect? Yes, so we've got uh, the international team coming again this April. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to um, have open a screening centre as well, and maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later. But we've got the team coming in April, and they're going to do um, free surgeries again. Mm -hmm. um, we've uh, Dr. Marianne Karai from CWM has identified a list of patients, and they're all going to be screened by Dr. Ben Anderson from Brisbane again. And Dr. Ashish Katewa will come as well from India. We've also got Dr. Sean Seti coming from the United States. Mm -hmm. He's also a renowned surgeon. He does adult and pediatric um, cardiothoracic surgery. So we've got a very good team of health professionals that are going to be coming again, providing free, um, you know, all, all these health professionals, they take up time from their busy schedule, mm -hmm. come here to Fiji to help our children and, um, you know, without charging a dollar. Mm -hmm. So a huge contribution from their end in terms of their expertise. Right. So that's, that's something that cannot, you can't put a dollar value to it when you save someone's life, especially when you help out those who are underprivileged. Uh, families mm -hmm. may not be able to afford even yes. a tenth yes. of what the actual cost of that is. Looking at working with the Ministry of Health, of course you use their facilities, but uh, have there been any works that have been done in the past or maybe something in the future to sort of upskill our own medical professionals here, given that we don't really have too many specialized surgeons and doctors in Fiji? Sure. So just in going back to, you know, working with the ministry, so of course with these um, heart surgeries, we've been collaborating with the ministry. Um, this year they are going to help us with consumables as well, so mm -hmm. that's a wonderful, um, uh, wonderful offer. Um, in terms of training the local doctors, so to be really honest, for the last 20 years there have been visiting teams coming mm -hmm. um, to Fiji, but the local doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals have not really been trained in this area. It's a very specific area. Mm -hmm. So part of uh, Sai Prima Foundation's um, initiative in terms of, we've got a medical scholarship program mm -hmm. in conjunction with the Sanjeevani Hospitals India. Mm -hmm. um, and we've already started. So last year we had Dr. Marianne Karai, who was a pediatric registrar at CWM Hospital, mm -hmm. go to India. Um, she did some training in pediatric uh, cardiology and especially in ECHO, mm -hmm. so screening um, uh, you know, doing cardiac screening on children, mm -hmm. and um, that was a that was a wonderful experience for her. Um, we would have liked her to go for longer, but you know they couldn't release her for any more than three months. But we are looking at other healthcare professionals going in the future, mm. and that really is part of um, what we believe in. Mm. Um, eventually, we locals need to be involved. Initiatives like that have really benefited us, especially considering Marianne Corey did uh, come on to the show earlier on uh, yeah. as part of our rheumatic heart disease uh, mm -hmm. show that we had done. And she did mention that, you know, the mm -hmm. training that she received mm -hmm. actually helped her, you know, get better in helping out the others who are not quite so v well versed in, uh, you know, picking out yes. signs and symptoms and also helping out those who actually have rheumatic heart disease, mm -hmm. uh, being very hands on in that particular mm -hmm field. Looking at other uh, works that you do, I understand that you also distribute free food and clothing to the underprivileged. Of course, uh, we don't really like to talk about it quite as much, but we do have quite a large number of, of people in Fiji living below the poverty line. So um, could you tell us more about it? Yeah. So we've got another project called Sai Anapuna, or basically feeding of the underprivileged and needy people. Um, what we're doing under that, uh, um, through that project is um, Giving um, grocery needs to, we've identified about seven families who are really below the poverty line, single mothers with lots of children who really are struggling to make ends meet and to feed their families. So a couple of our foundation members have identified these families and we're 
now giving them grocery needs um, on a monthly basis or three weekly basis so they've got all the basic things that they need to provide themselves with meals. We also um, had, there have been times where we've also worked with a lot of aged care institutions, orphanages, and provided them with meals as well. Mm. Um, and all of this, of course, is also coming, f of course, free. Um, mm -hmm. They don't have to pay anything. We actually go out to them. We actually go out to wherever they are, whether they're in Suva or Nosori. Mm. Um, so we've got a team that's looking after this. Um, we have provided up to 30,000 meals uh, to date. Um, and the plan is to just continue um, expanding. We have some donors who have been very kind as well. So our foundation members who are supporting this initiative. And there are a few other members in the community and other individuals who have contributed to it, towards this wonderful project. And, you know, it's almost as if, you know, we, we, there's so much food in the world, yet there are people who are hungry and starving. And it just becomes a uh, responsibility of every individual who can afford it to help. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we really believe in and would like to continue doing. We'll have more for you right after the break. Welcome back. Now, Dr. Kupali, one of the uh, very important aspects of all of these projects is community awareness. People need to be aware of these um, projects to be able to fully take advantage of them. One of the um, benefits is the Sri Satya Sai Sanjeevani Medical Center. Um, tell us about what happens at this medical center. Sure. So this medical center um, was inaugurated last April, 27th of April, actually on the Prime Minister's birthday. Mm -hmm. um, well, inaugurated by him on his birthday, which is wonderful. Um, this medical center um, is, provides free uh, services, medical consultations and medications to an anyone. So mm -hmm. it's really more for the underprivileged and the needy, but anyone who walks through the door, no one's going to be charged a dollar. Mm -hmm. um, this medical center is in conjunction with the Ministry of Health and Medical Services. So the land on which the medical center sits was donated by the government. Um, the foundation has built the medical center, so our trustees and there have been other individuals and companies that have donated. Um, so we've built the medical center and now the uh, staff that we have there are through Ministry of Health mm -hmm. and they're helping us with medications and other consumables as well. Now this medical center, um, we've got general medical consultations, so we've got a doctor there, general medical consultations, we uh, also do pap smears and other things for women's, um, women's uh, pap okay, cervical cancer screening. We've got a dietitian there who does dietary, dietetic consultations, so you know that a large portion of the population in Fiji is diabetic, mm -hmm. um, so that's the dietitian's role becomes quite important mm -hmm. and also malnutrition in children and other things. So we've got that. We've got two nurses who are there, um, so, you know, dressings and other sort of general things. Very soon um, we're going to have uh, some specialists starting with us, so general physicians who will come down from the CWM hospital. Mm. Um, so that's going to start very soon. When we opened the medical centre, we also brought in some specialists um, from India. We had an endocrinologist or a diabetes specialist come through uh, who provided free diabetic consultations and also a dermatologist or a skin specialist come mm. through at that time. And also we do plan in the future to sort of bring in various visiting specialists um, on a regular basis, especially the ones that we don't have in Fiji, mm. to mm. complement the government's um, and the services and initiatives as well. Um, very soon in April, we're actually inaugurating a pediatric cardiac screening center within our medical center, mm -hmm. within the Sanjeevni Medical Center. So we're getting an echo machine. Echo is basically sc um, scanning of the heart. So we're getting a donation of this machine from New Zealand, and um, we're going to have uh, Dr. Marianne, one of the doctors, come through from the CWM hospital and conduct reg regular echoes on children, at least one to twice a week. Mm -hmm. So the plan is to sort of build a database uh, have these children screen so that you've got a group of children that will be identified and will sort of go on to have surgeries later on. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're not screening, then you don't know how big the problem is. And we know mm -hmm. that about 1% of the population of children has congenital mm -hmm. heart disease. Right. So in Fiji, about 20,000 children are born every year. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at about 200 children. Mm -hmm. I mean, quite often uh, it happens that um, when these diseases progress far beyond the early stages, it's, yes. it's then picked up. Yes. So the screening initiative is, is, yes. is something that's really that's going right. to help people. Um, so let's talk about uh, one of the benefits that people living in rural areas can um, benefit from the foundation, which is the Health on Wheels initiative. Yeah. Uh, tell us more about that. Okay. So the Health on Wheels initiative is really taking health care you know, out into the community where the people live. Mm -hmm. So we take doctors, 
These are general practitioners, some specialist um, general physicians. Mm -hmm. We take dietitians, physio, the Women's Wellness Center, the eye team. Um, we also have um, some members come from Diabetes Fiji. So if you look at the setup on the day, mm -hmm. you know, we've got a team that does the registration. So we're registering all the different people that are there, um, mm -hmm. the patients that come through. There's triage, so we have a few nurses that will triage these patients. Of course, the, you know, if they're really sick, they'll be seen quickly or they'll be mm -hmm. divided to where they need to go. Then we've got the doctors who are going to be seeing these patients and you know, providing them with a diagnosis and a treatment plan. Uh, sometimes they may need some investigation, so they will be referred to mm. you know, a hospital or their nearest sort of center that can do, say, x-rays or mm. some other blood test that we may not be able to do on the day. Mm. Uh, but all patients, all adults will get a blood sugar level check, so mm. we're screening for diabetes. They'll have their blood pressure checked. And a lot of times we pick up patients who've got undiagnosed diabetes or mm. high blood pressure. Um, they also have their weight and height done, and we work out their body mass index mm -hmm. to work out if they're overweight or obese or within the normal range. And we have found a bit of a trend that, you know, there are a lot of people out in the communities that are overweight. And, mm -hmm. you know, if we um, identify these things early and we provide some intervention, we can potentially prevent them from ending up with heart disease, diabetes, mm -hmm. strokes, and all of those sort of conditions. Um, of course, pap smears are very important for women mm -hmm. of the reproductive age group and up to 70, 69, 70 years old. Mm -hmm. So the wellness um, centre nurses come down with us as well and sometimes the doctors and they do pap smears mm -hmm. and women's health consultations and also just providing them with education, mm -hmm. you know, that you, know, you need to have a pap smear. It's a screening test for cervical cancer. There's a big mm -hmm. taboo in our community as mm -hmm. well. Anything that involves something that's, you know, reproductive or sort of sexual in nature and people feel very embarrassed mm -hmm. to talk about it. But, mm -hmm. you know, we've found that sometimes these patients will take up, you know, advantage of this situation mm -hmm. and see these nurses and talk to them and talk to them in their languages as well in Fiji and or whatever else or Hindi. So you to. get good reception from the places? We get very good reception mm -hmm. from the places. It's mm -hmm. uh, been fantastic. We've seen over, I'd say almost 4,000 patients mm -hmm. so great. far. Um, where is the Health on Wheels project going next? So at the moment it's going, we're in the Thai Level region because when we started off um, there was Cyclone Winston and a lot of devastation in that area and so we've covered quite a few villages around there and we've still got a few villages to cover and we're also looking at the Navu area and we work with, we work with the ministry to work out mm -hmm. where the need is mm -hmm. and to go where the need is. Don't mm -hmm. need to duplicate efforts mm -hmm. because we take a large team so sometimes we have up to 100 people, volunteers mm -hmm. and members that come and mm -hmm. as a foundation we provide transport for them, we provide meals for them because they're there from morning till you know at least four or four o'clock or so and mm -hmm. then get them back safely. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a big project and um, mm -hmm. it requires a lot of coordination as well and we've got some foundation members. We've got Namrata uh, Tapu who's a pharmacist and now she's the Health on Wheels coordinator. I used to do that role but now she's taken over and mm -hmm. a lot of coordination between all the different groups that we need to make sure how we take lots of people across. Mm -hmm. We'll have more for you right after the break. Dr. Kripali, let's talk about some other initiatives that um, are currently under the Sai Prema Foundation. One of those is helping orphaned children, yes. uh, which is called the Children of God. Could you tell us more about that? Sure. So the Children of God project, really, as you mentioned, it's, it's to help, help the children, help... Um, I don't like to use the term orphans, but children who really don't have parents who are not as privileged as some of us are. Um, so what the foundation decided to do was to provide some sort of assistance to, to these um, children and to the organization. So some work that we've done um, with Dilkusha Home is we've got, gone there, done a bit of a needs assessment to find out what it is that they really need. Mm. A lot of times, you know, people, uh, lots of good people out there in the community are going there donating you know, food and donating clothing mm -hmm. and that's all really wonderful but we thought we'll find out what, it is, what is it that they really need and so we, we spoke to the children, we spoke to the deaconess and the staff there and worked out what their needs were. So a few things that we realized was you know, maybe health care. Mm -hmm. So we have actually conducted about three medical camps so far mm -hmm. at the Dilkusha home. We've taken a small team of doctors and also our dentists and of course, Nasori Health Center is close by, so they're continuously being supported by them. But sometimes it's just easier to mm -hmm. go into their, mm -hmm. um, you know, go go there to their home and, and see them. So we found that initially, you know, the children may have had a bit of issues with their skin and mm -hmm. a lot of skin infections. 
And we also realized that, you know, uh, their dormitories, they did have fans, but, you know, not sufficient enough because there are quite a few, um, mm -hmm. uh, of course, beds and quite a few children in there. So we installed some fans for them. Um, and we have conducted some um, Christmas parties and some lunches and just some outings and get-togethers for these children as so well. So things to sort of improve their quality of life, That's just right. to make them feel like, you know, they're yes. not uh, away from us, where yes. they can enjoy the same things as us. That's you right. also happen to have something that is very important uh, to everyone around the world, especially here in Fiji. We always hear about blood shortages, yes. and you hear of the Red Cross and other organizations yes. uh, holding blood drives. You have your Be a Hero initiative. Yes. So with the Be a, Be a Hero initiative, um, uh, you know, we realize that there is a critical shortage of blood, especially um, when their surgery is about to happen at the hospital. Um, so we partnered up with the Fiji National Blood Services and mm. are conducting blood drives um, pretty much in Suva and also in the Western Division mm -hmm. as part of our Be a Hero project. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, with one pint of blood that's donated, it can benefit three people because mm -hmm. you can use a plasma, you can use a platelets and the other components of the mm -hmm. blood. Um, sometimes people are really reluctant to donate blood because they think, oh, well, I'm going to donate. What's going to happen to me? I might not have enough blood. Certainly the body regenerates these red cells. And so, you know, you can donate after three to four months. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a good thing to do because really you're giving someone life. Mm -hmm. There are some people who may die if they didn't get blood. Mm -hmm. So that's why we decided that we would, um, you know, sort of partner with the National Blood Bank Services and, and have this initiative. Actually, in fact, last year, our foundation was the um, highest collector of blood in mm -hmm in Fiji and also in the Central Division and we were second highest collectors in the West. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been a really uh, wonderful initiative and uh, I would encourage anybody who is even thinking about donating blood to just go out there and do it. You know, mm -hmm. there is a screening process that if, you're not, if it's not appropriate or you're not well, mm -hmm. you know, they will tell you that, you know, sorry, you can't donate. Mm -hmm. So I think that whoever is healthy and well and if you can donate it, mm -hmm. a wonderful idea. Before we get into your volunteer program, mm -hmm. One Fiji, I thought that we could just uh, lightly talk about You Are Not Alone. It's a mental health awareness program, something in the Pacific that we don't tend to broach quite often, especially if you go to um, hospitals, you happen to sit down with your family and friends. You're not quite as comfortable talking about it. With your uh, foundation going out and caring work, have you actually witnessed people actually opening up and talking about the issues that they have with counselling that's given? So, you know, mental health is a really big part of... Um, mm -hmm overall health and well-being and a lot of times it is neglected because of that taboo that you know if I tell someone I'm depressed or I'm anxious they're gonna think I'm, I'm not a good person or that I can't cope and certainly I think mental health is a big issue throughout the world in my role as a general practitioner as well I see lots of people mm. out there in the community who are having these issues and I mean if, if we sort of create this awareness and mm. tell these people look it's okay if you feel this way you know you are not alone we're there to help you and support you. Certainly people do open up and it has happened, mm -hmm. you know, in some of our medical camps um, that we've had mm, so far. And I know that, you know, the government, of course, there's the Empower Pacific, um, mm -hmm. the counselling body that is, is there. Uh, they provide free counselling services as well. And mm -hmm. so I urge anyone who, you know, who is worried, upset, anxious to, to seek these um, sort of services. Mm -hmm. And in the future, we do plan to sort of expand a little bit more on, on mm -hmm. this project um, mm -hmm. and, and do a little bit more in the space of, of mental health, but really more ag around the awareness, I think, just to get people to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. right. Well, we mm -hmm. tie in with the holistic approach to wellness that you have. Right. Uh, let's look at One Fiji. It's a volunteer-based program. Tell yes. us more about it. Okay, so we're really excited about this One Fiji volunteer group that we've launched recently. Mm -hmm. um, we actually do have a Facebook page, um, and of course the name is One Fiji Volunteer Group. Um, whoever's interested in volunteering um, their time, their services, most welcome for you to sort of just go on our Facebook page, like our page, and you'll see all the different activities that we conduct. Um, so, you know, there are, our foundation members are there, and there are other volunteers who help us. But this is an opportunity for all Fijians, you know, regardless of who you are, where you're based, if you want to help, you know, there, is, there are opportunities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you realize that when you help other people, you know, the satisfaction that you get is mm -hmm. just, it's just different, especially when you're doing it without getting any financial remuneration. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're doing our job and getting satisfaction, I think that's fine. But when we do something without, without wanting anything in return, mm -hmm. it's just such a satisfaction that you get. So to all the people, you know, out in the community, I mean, we've had a fantastic response in our first, um, when we launched it first, and we announced that we were having a medical camp, about 500 volunteers, you know, sort of said they were interested and wanted to help. Mm. Uh, of course, we didn't have space for everyone in that one occasion, so we took a certain number of people because we organized transport as well. 
but you know we've we've had a blood drive recently and we've had volunteers who've wanted to come and help out mm -hmm. so you know there's lots of things that anyone can do and mm -hmm. it, it doesn't cost you anything you don't have to pay there's no anything certain criteria or anything that they have to fulfill well, there's it? not a specific criteria but once they sort of say mm -hmm. they're interested we we get them to fill out a little form mm -hmm. and um and then you know there are various different projects and mm -hmm. they can choose what they like to volunteer their services with and mm -hmm. you know there are quite a few healthcare professionals who say oh we're interested in coming to your medical camp so we said okay mm -hmm. that's fine you know you can you can help us with this and there's other people who can come to blood drives or the food distribution program or mm -hmm. as you can see we've got so many projects so most times most people will find that there's one that's close to their heart or mm -hmm. the children's heart surgeries for that matter mm -hmm. um, we've had really uh, we've had good response with um, organizations wanting to help us mm -hmm. as well. So if there's a potential volunteer out there, what do they need to do? I would say just if you've got access to Facebook, just go on to our one just go to one Fiji volunteer group. Just mm -hmm. like the page and just say that you're interested in volunteering and we will do the rest. We will um, send you information and um, organize the rest. Mm -hmm. Before we wrap up this segment, just very quickly, tell us about SciCares. Uh, it's uh, something to do with working with underprivileged women. I, I know that for a fact that in rural communities, there's quite a few number of uh, women who are disenfranchised. Sure. So at the moment with our SciCares, um, it's sort of just extending out to helping a lot of these single mothers um, who are struggling to feed their children through our um, feeding of uh, the Annapurna program. And, you know, in the future, we do plan to do a little bit more. Um, we'll try and see if there's... Uh, any way of getting a little bit of employment or other opportunities to, to these um, women. Um, so at the moment, it's sort of around feeding of these children and these women and, um, of course, health care. So, you know, they're free to come to our Sanjeevni Medical Center. It's free. Um, there's no cost at all. So at the moment, I would say that that's where we are. Okay. We'll be back with the final segment right after this. Welcome back. So let's touch on some future projects of the foundation. Uh, namely, one of those is the Saiprema Ashram, which, as you've said, is a global center for love and peace in the Pacific Harbor. So wh wh what exactly does this mean? Okay, so in April this year, we'll be inaugurating um, this uh, Saiprema Ashram, which is a multi-faith spiritual center. And, you know, in the future, it's going to be a center for love and peace and a center for human development. Um, so at the moment, we're going to inaugurate a hall and uh, we do have more land. In the future, the plan is that we do build some residences and have retreats, spiritual retreats out there, mm -hmm. um, open to all races, religions, you know, it's not just um, confined to anyone, mm -hmm. um, specific religion or race. Um, mm -hmm. So the plan is, to, it, it sort of um, ensures or it goes with our values of, um, you know, human, basic human values of mm -hmm. love, peace, nonviolence and all of that. So. It ties in with um, the fact that we want to make sure that there's love and peace in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and this um, center is going to be uh, a multi-faith spiritual center. Mm -hmm. um, that's really what's going to happen. Uh, not future. to uh, give anyone any misconceptions of it, it being some sort of inoculative uh, environment where there's going to be some sort of propaganda being pushed. It's more about harmony and peace oh, and all of that. Yes, well, right. looking at the hospital that uh, you had slightly uh, you know, alluded to earlier on in our uh, earlier segments, tell us more about that. And also you said that there's going to be work being carried out in uh, April. I believe you've got uh, someone coming in from the United States of America with a uh, very unique device. Yes, so um, in April, when we do inaugurate our pediatric cardiac screening center within our Sanjeevni Hospital, we've got uh, Mr. Arvind Thiagarajan, who's a scientist. Um, he's based in California, and he's actually um, created a device, which is like a really smart stethoscope, and it, it, it's, I think it's called a Viscope. What it does is within a few seconds, it can pick up whether there's any issues with the heart. Um, and it's quite an easy to use, very simple device. Um, you don't have to be a doctor or really, tr you know, you don't need lots and lots of training. It can be any sort of person that can be trained to do this. Mm -hmm. And if you get an abnormal result, it means that these children would then go on to need actual echoes or screening of the heart. Now, an echo, you know, you need a, a doctor or a technician who's highly trained in this. It requires mm -hmm. many, many years of training. And this is a very simple device, really good for screening. So it'll just help increase the pickup rate of um, congenital and heart disease and then move on to the next step of doing echoes and then these children can be identified for 
um, surgeries later on. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing we also do is during our medical camps, um, we also have some, sometimes we do have the doctors coming in and doing echoes, mm -hmm. and we have picked up children with congenital heart disease and rheumatic heart disease as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of the work that's mm -hmm. happened in this uh, space. Mm -hmm. So, so that's uh, in relation to the US uh, expert that you have coming. Mm -hmm. yes. um, talk to us more about the hospital. It's one of your biggest projects. Yes, so the hospital is, um, is a project that um, we feel will yes will be our biggest project. Um, we are uh, so we've drawn up plans for this hospital. So the plan is for it to be a pediatric congenital heart disease hospital, uh, a hospital where we can have surgeries for these children with congenital heart disease. And as you know, I mentioned earlier that we have teams coming in and operating at CWM Hospital. About three teams coming a year. Now with uh, with um, these surgeries, they're very highly specialised. The equipment that's required is really special sort of equipment mm -hmm. and so the teams are bringing in lots of consumables and machines and all of that. So now if we've got a hospital, a facility that is fully equipped to have all of this, it becomes easier. Mm -hmm. You know, initially we could have visiting teams coming and operating from this um, hospital and of course the, the plan is that in the future we actually have our local doctors and nurses all trained. Now our partners in India, the Sanjeevni, Sri Satisai Sanjeevni Hospital, that's the same model that they use. So they provide um, free pediatric congenital heart disease surgery. So the screening is free, the surgeries are free, um, and they have done a phenomenal, phenomenal number of surgeries and catheterization procedures. And that's what we are looking at for mm -hmm. Fiji in the future. In fact, in the South Pacific, there's no hospital mm -hmm. of that caliber. Um, and so if we do, when we do have the hospital, we'll be the first in the South Pacific. And really, it's not just for Fiji, but for the neighboring South Pacific islands, because None of these countries have this facility. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's an ambitious project. Um, it requires lots of funding as well. So we have drawn up plans. We're working on the funding. Mm -hmm. um, also, we're starting the process. So Dr. Marianne was sent last year. We're also working on hopefully sending some of the surgeons to go to India and start training because it does take between three to five years to train surgeons. Mm -hmm. And then we've got to train some perfusionists who can run this really critical piece of equipment, the heart-lung machine the nurses to provide the intensive care support. So all of that, you know, um, there's a, so it's a lot of things that are required right. before you can actually open a hospital, but that's what we're working towards. Is there a potential timeline that you're looking at? So we're hoping within the next few years, really, we're, um, the plans are all drawn up. It really just, now what matters is the funding. Mm. Once we get funding, we can start the hospital and hopefully within the next two to three years, we'll, <laughs> we'll have a hospital. <laughs> well, we wish you all the best in that. And we thank you for taking your time out to uh, join us on the show tonight. Thank you so much for having me. It was a real honor and pleasure to be here. Thank you. And that's all we have for you on the show tonight. Do join us next week. Good evening. Mm -hmm.